it's generous to share. And that's what I decided to do with my new baby, my 223 trainer. I let Travis shoot it, and that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. Gavin, you're here from ultimatereloader.com. I'm back with Travis Fox. Travis, thank you for joining us. Hi, Gavin. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here, guys. I can not get over how awesome this rifle is. <laughs> it's pretty good. You know, you guys that have watched, unless it's your first time here, you know these rifles that Gavin builds shoot, and they shoot very well. Here's the, this is a review from our last video where we did the complete end-to-end -end build here and break-in. The, la the first five shot group that I shot with the rifle with factory Burger 77 OTM ammo went into 0.222 inches. When I saw that happen, I was just thinking, I can't believe this is factory ammo. I can't believe I haven't even broken this thing in yet. I know, so we're like super impressed with this Burger 77 OTM ammo. And I was like, we have the components. <laughs> Can I duplicate it? Can I make it shoot as well as Gavin shot it? Can I shoot this rifle as well as Gavin shot it? And the answer to that was? Absolutely. Absolutely. So this tells me two things. Number one, this ammo is awesome. And if you have a chance to buy it, you should get some. And then when you shoot it and you have all the empty cases, this nice Lapua brass, yeah. you can duplicate it here with these components and you can come up with the same exact load and you will just shoot bug holes. It is awesome stuff. But there's one thing that you've got to figure out, and that is what powder is used. You can weigh the powder charge for a broken down ammo, but you kind of have to know which powder it is. Yep, so we reverse engineer it. Start it at the beginning, measure the overall length, mm -hmm. so I know what I'm gonna end up loading lengthwise to. Yep. We pulled the bullet apart, and it's obviously the 77 OTMs from Burger. Yep, it says right on the box. <laughs> Dump the powder out, weigh the powder. You get the measurement that you're going to need, and then you sit there and look at the powder, and you're like, ah, what is this going to be? So we do a bunch of investigation, and Burger Lapua is under capstone, maybe a, maybe a Vitivituri powder. Not always, not sure. always, but most likely it's a Vitivituri powder. I initially thought that it was going to be the N530 or 540 or something hmm. like that. And I open that up and I look at the powder granules and it's like, I'm like, oh, that's, nope, not that. Hmm. So we go and look and I think, well, maybe it's a Hodgson powder. Nope. And I go to the N140 and I'm like, oh, this is the stuff. Which is known for 223, by the yeah. way, right? And it's right on, on Vitivituri's website that this is a 223 powder. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I think this is it. It measures out the same quantity to the same granules. Mm -hmm. Et cetera, et cetera. And what was that powder charge? 24.6. 24.6. That's right, that right in there. Write that down. <laughs> yeah. But we're going to talk about that in a second. 24.6. I plug it in there. I go into Gordon's reloading tools. Everything looks good to go on that. Went and shot it. And I was like stunned. <laughs> stunned. Yeah. It's perfect. So we know what this is. We know how to make it and we're gonna shoot bug holes all day long with it. So here's the thing. Now, when we go to do the testing on it, we shot the same exact size of groups. My velocities were down a little bit, probably about 75 feet per second. Mm -hmm. But I've been doing a bunch of research on humidity and powder and temperature and all this other stuff. That could potentially play into it a little bit, I'm not sure. Sure, um, but that first, so there was two different shooting sessions and in the first session, you had 10 shots that went into 0.372 inches. How many shots? 10. 10. 10. With no flyers. This is where you see the difference between really fine bullets, really fine barrels, and a complete custom rifle yep. and other rifles. Is the rifles I've built to an exacting level, they just don't have the flyers. If you're dealing with a good load and the rifle likes that load. Now, with the factory rifle, my experience, you're a lot more likely to just see a, an occasional random result. Yeah, they're just or, not built to the exacting specifications that Gavin's building rifles to. So, honestly, to, to take 10 shots, and I'm watching these groups, and it's just staying all together. To, and I'm like, oh man, I've got to make sure and do my part, <laughs> you know, and everything. But it just comes together, and you get done, and you're like, wow, that was cool. Very yep. cool. And your son, Prin. 
This yep. was kind of an introduction to precision rifle. I mean, he shot before, but like yep. nothing like this, right? So my son is my son is getting into centerfire stuff. He's shot some NRL 22 before. Mm -hmm. I took him with this. I had him shoot some groups with it. He shot a group right off the bat that was very small. In the threes with yeah. a bipod, right? Yep. So yeah, with the bipod. That wasn't even off the bench. Yeah. So here's a, a young kid who he's just he's got a little bit of shooting experience. He's just kind of getting into it more, and he was able just to just stack them and it was pretty impressive i mean good discipline a good rifle easy to shoot very fun yeah it's a way to get people hooked on shooting you know you have this trigger tech trigger set down at 6.8 ounces you know you've got it in a, a nice rest or or with the bipod and a nice rear bag it just goes where you point it and yep. it's that that's the start of the addiction that's yeah. that's what i love about this yeah yeah, so it's he, good to share, right? <laughs> he was actually shooting some steel with it, and he was like, "Oh, that's that's pretty fun." So, nice. yeah, he definitely wants to shoot some more, and he was pretty happy about this one. Yep. So we can see now the difference was you were shooting ten shot groups across the board, and that wasn't a part of my uh, you know break in routine or whatever. And I would say a three seventy two group for ten shots is real close in performance to a two 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 group at five shots. You yeah. know, we're gonna have to do a little bit more shooting, um, and then came shooting suppressed, right? And mm -hmm. so that was today's exercise. Three different groups, all of them, one of them under a half inch and a couple of them kind of at a half inch uh, with a lot of Mirage. Yep. And probably with the suppressor, was that the Omega 46? I believe so, yes. The hybrid. Yeah. Yes. Uh, not Omega, the hybrid 46. It was a hybrid 46. Yes, with a suppressor cover on it. I'm wondering if that threw the tune out a little bit in terms oh. of the harmonics, you know? It could have a little bit, yeah. It wasn't, it's still not bad groupings though. Oh no, um, 10 uh, shots into a half inch is yeah, super. very acceptable. <laughs> I mean, we could always make it better. Yep. For sure. We could try some different loads, I think, you I, know, with the suppressor or yeah. even try the Omega 300 as, as, as another alternative. True. I have gone to, when I'm gathering data for things, to trying to increase my, uh, my data set by more, more shooting. Uh, I think you get a better result and you get better data. So we can get really good. You can always, you know, these guys have the three shot groups and the people have five shot groups. And when I'm gathering data, I'm tending to run to a 10 shot group now, even sometimes a 20 shot group for chrono data and stuff mm -hmm. like that, ballistics data, things like that. Yep. But it gets very stressful doing that because you want to make sure you're pulling the trigger the same every time and you got to keep those group sizes small. Yeah, absolutely. So we saw here that we were able to replicate the accuracy of the Burger 77 OTM factory ammo. And by the way, if you're doing anything except reaching out to the farthest corners of the universe, this ammo out of the box, at least in this rifle, you know, awesome. Yeah. But where we did see a difference was with the velocity data. So why don't you walk us through that? Well, the velocity was, I was about 75 feet per second slower on our load with the same powder charge, hmm. same accuracy. Part of me wonders if it's humidity thing hmm. or temperature thing, I'm not quite sure. Uh, we're loaded the same length, same, everything is exactly the same. Could be primer though too. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, I, we don't I'm, know what primer they're using. I'm not sure what primer they're using. They could be using a different primer. That, that's gonna, that could gain you I don't know what, 20, 30 feet per second, maybe on a 223 cartridge, I find that hard to believe. Mm -hmm. But they could gain some with that. However, I still am more in the humidity thing. Okay, so let's look at the SDs and the ES. For the factory loads, we had an extreme spread of 67 and a standard deviation of 19.93. Let's call that about 20. <laughs> and then for the 24.6, there was an extreme spread of 30, which cuts it less than in half, and an SD of 10.82, which approximately cuts that in half. Very good. Yep. 24.7, 36.76, and 11.73. So we're right knocking on the door of what we could use for a 1,000 yard load. Now, shooting two to three at 1,000 yards is not easy, but if you're in a PRS match and you're shooting tactical bolt class, you're gonna be doing that, Yeah. right? It's, it's a reality. It's gonna be really hard to see your hits and your misses, and you're gonna have some extreme you know, dope for dial up. Yeah. Uh, but it's totally possible, you know. We've we've definitely done it. I've shot the Valkyrie here at a thousand yards pretty frequently, and it's actually done pretty pretty well, depending on on the wind. So my takeaway is, I think 
since you are using the Andy FX120i scale and weighing down to 0 0.02 approximately consistency, yep. what would factory loading equipment give you? 0.1 to 0 0.3 variation maybe? Somewhere Probably, in that yeah. Range, somewhere you know? in there. Uh, any any mass-produced ammo, um, that does make a difference. You know, yeah. and, and when you're pushing a 223 you know, bullet out to 1,000 yards or, or even 800 or, or whatever, that will make a difference. Yeah, you're going to definitely get better ESs and SDs doing that. Right. Which is going to translate into better grouping, better shooting. Mm -hmm. You're going to get more consistency. Your ballistics data is going to be more consistent. Everything is going to be more consistent. And just by that powder charge being just mm -hmm. so. Okay. So with the 223 trainer then, what are our next steps? We already have the 77 load which is what our goal was. We kind of designed this whole rifle around the 77 grain bullet. Worked with Dave Manson to get the reamer geometry just perfect. And we are totally mission accomplished, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. this, this is just awesome. The, this, is, this is where you're at a very difficult point in load development. You have a load that is very accurate, performs very well, but you still want to get a little bit more out of it. And it's like, where do you go? I mean, yeah. we could play with seating depths. There's all kinds of arguments on that. Eric Cortino will yell at me for that one. Um, you know, I would like to see a little bit more velocity maybe on this same bullet. So mm -hmm. seating the bullet out a little bit longer, because this is a compressed load. You're crunching down the powder on mm -hmm. this, by the way. Seating the bullet out a little bit louder, longer, will give you a little more powder capacity. You could potentially True. drive this another... I'd be surprised to get another 100 feet per second out of it, but another 50 to 75 per feet per second out of it. So you know, we need to make a modified case then as well, unless you want to do the jam method of cartridge overall right. length, you know, the two lands distance or whatever. Uh, I like that idea. Uh, also, I'd like to try the Omega 300 on here yep. and see, you know, and then also maybe do slow fire exercises. I don't know. These are nice round groups that you had going on, like like this one right here. Yeah. Uh, at about a half inch, which is still awesome. But I'm wondering, you know, with with a different suppressor on there that has a different mass to it, and then with some so, slow fire, if that's going to change things at all. Actually, what I'm thinking is to actually take this bullet and use it for the 22 GT. Just published the full build on that, the ultra lightweight 22 GT hunting rifle. Oh, my word, that thing is awesome. Yeah, it was pretty and cool. Based on how this rifle likes the 77 OTMs, I'd be curious to try those. Could be. Yeah. The other thing I'd like to do is we may need to try a different powder. Get True. Get a different velocity. So yeah, we could try Varget, for instance. Yeah. So we have questions on that, and we'd love to hear you guys' feedback. Yeah. You guys are shooting a 223 trainer. If you're shooting this 77 bullet, what velocities are you getting with yeah. what powder? Exactly. And how's it shooting for you? We would love to know that. This has been fun. And I'm, I'm glad I could share my rifle with you. <laughs> I'm glad that <laughs> I got to share joy, it. It's it? Oh, yeah. It just does. It's I wish one of those things that you, thing. you get to shoot it and you're like, oh, that was nice. <laughs> now, I will also mention that we have opened the wait list. We now have our FFL 07, and we're going to be looking at rifle builds for the general public. So if this is something you're interested, you can go to ultimatereloader.com slash rifles and get on that wait list. We have no timeline so far. Uh, we're wanting to see what people want, and when we're ready, we're going to reach back out to people. So, this has been awesome. Now I got to see what I can do with 10 shot groups. Fingers crossed. Maybe <laughs> even better than what you did. <laughs> I hope so. This has been fun. That concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make your voice heard. If you have something to say, please drop a comment. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not going to want to miss the awesome content that is coming up. And finally, flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later because I'm off to go shooting.